this is part 1 of this series for the sake of simplicity the economy shall be identified as goods economy and money economy goods economy is also known as real economy or goods market money economy is also known as finance market or money market the theory of income and output analyzes the goods economy and explains equilibrium income determination similarly the theory of money and interest examines money economy and proceeds to explain equilibrium interest determination these two theories treat these two markets separately as one independent of the other when they deal with goods economy they assume money economy variables are constant and when they speak about interest determination they assume goods economy variables are constant with this basic understanding we shall proceed to discuss the need for islm model which very well understands the interdependence of these two economies and attempts to combine these two theories look at this graph figure 1 and figure 2 illustrates goods economy equilibrium figure 3 illustrates the money economy equilibrium equilibrium income determination and equilibrium interest determination have already been discussed by me visit my channels link is given in the description let us see first the goods economy it assumes interest rate is given or no change in the interest rate equality between aggregate demand and aggregate supply determines goods economy equilibrium to begin with the economy is in equilibrium at y1 level of income figure 1 shows this at y1 level of income savings is equal to investment it is illustrated in figure 2 look at the same graph at the existing level of interest the business community increases the investment the investment curve i1 is shifted to i2 the new investment curve cuts the savings curve at f2 the new equilibrium income is y2 look at figure 1 the increase in investment shifts the aggregate demand curve upwards the new aggregate demand curve is c plus i1 it cuts the aggregate supply curve at e2 the equilibrium income is y2 thus the goods market equilibrium is explained keeping the money economy variables constant one thing which deserves our attention is it does not consider the effect of increase in income on interest rate and the effect of change in interest rate on the level of income this is a serious flaw it makes policy making ineffective let us examine this interdependence look at figure 3 to begin with the equilibrium interest rate is r1 after an increase in the income from y1 to y2 the transaction demand for money increases the transaction demand curve t is shifted to right the new transaction demand curve is t1 this increase in turn shifts the liquidity preference curve to the right it moves from lp1 to lp2 the new demand curve for money lp2 cuts the supply curve of money ms at point g2 the interest rate increases from r1 to r2 this is how increase in income in the goods economy affect the interest rate in the money economy 
the story doesn't end here this increase in interest rate naturally has an adverse effect on the investment in the goods economy it pushes the investment curve i2 downward this in turn will pull down the aggregate demand curve the final result is the new equilibrium level of income will not be y2 but less than that this is how the money market also play its role in determining the goods market equilibrium income this interaction between the two market is not there in the theory of income and output this is a serious lacuna you can find the same flaw in the theory of money and interest let us see that also look at figure 3 to begin with demand for money is equal to supply of money at g2 in other words the demand curve of money lp1 cuts the supply curve of money ms at point g2 the equilibrium interest is r2 the supply of money is increased by monetary authority the supply curve of money is shifted to right the new supply curve of money is m1 s1 it cuts the liquidity preference curve lp1 at g1 the new interest rate is r0 the theory of money and interest stops the analysis with this it also doesn't consider its effect on the goods economy equilibrium and its counter effect on money economy equilibrium let us take these effects into account after a fall in the interest rate it is reflected in the goods economy due to a fall in the interest rate the investing community undertakes fresh investments the investment curve i1 is shifted upward the new investment curve i2 cuts the savings curve s yes, at f2 the new equilibrium income is y2 this in turn shifts the aggregate demand curve upward the new aggregate demand curve c plus i1 cuts the aggregate supply curve at e2 the equilibrium income is y2 this increase in income has its own reflection in the money economy increase in the income increases the transaction demand for money it shifts the transaction demand for money t to t1 it in turn shifts the demand curve of money lp1 to right the new demand curve of money lp2 cuts the supply curve of money m1 s1 at g3 the final interest rate is r1 this is higher than r0 this is how the goods economy plays its role in determining the equilibrium interest rate the theory of money and interest doesn't take the analysis this far again this is a serious lacuna our conclusion is that we cannot determine equilibrium income without first knowing the interest rate and again we cannot determine the equilibrium interest rate without first knowing the income level so there arises a need to determine the equilibrium rate of interest and the equilibrium income simultaneously the is and the lm model makes possible this simultaneous determination of equilibrium rate of interest and equilibrium level of income it is the is curve and the lm curve going to help us in this regard in the next video we shall see how to obtain the is curve we shall meet in the next video lesson.